The second Sunday in May is a wonderful day to slow down, break some of our normal routines, and celebrate the women who bore and raised us, or the women who are currently bearing and raising our children. It's not the only day to honor mothers. That's an, an exhortation in itself for sons, daughters, husbands, dads, for this son, husband, dad. That's just a drive-by exhortation, though. You get a two-for-one this morning. No, this morning I want to talk directly to moms. And to all moms to some degree, but especially to moms with young children. I know we have an unusual number of young moms in this church. I've seen you wrangling your little ones in the conference room upstairs. or at the changing table, changing a diaper with one hand while with the other hand you're trying to keep the two-year-old from running away. Or pacing, like a couple of you are now, in the back of the sanctuary until the baby falls asleep. I've seen you. And because we have three small children of our own, I know some things about you, or many of you. I know, for instance, that you sleep less than you should. That your kids secretly conspire about which one is going to get up each night and when. I know you've cleaned up that same mess 483 times this week. I know that you often forget to eat because you're so busy feeding everyone else. I know that right now, in one of your rooms, there's a pile of laundry engaged in a slow and hostile takeover. I know there's a hundred things you really, really want to do. Some of them that you even need to do, and yet there's never enough time. I know that you lay down some nights seriously unable to imagine how you'll do it all again tomorrow. And I know at times you feel alone. Your husband may not always understand what you bear and endure. Your children certainly won't understand. You may not even have friends, other mothers, who fully understand. I hope you do. But I want to remind you again this morning, and I hope this still lands on you with all the weight and beauty and wonder that it should. I hope this doesn't feel cliche to you. I want to remind you, young mother, someone understands you. Jesus sees and understands all that you carry and give as a mother. He gets it. No, he was never married to a still sinful, sometimes insensitive spouse. No, he didn't carry a baby for nine months or nurse them for another year or have to brave the terrible twos, but he gets it. He really gets it. If you can believe it, he gets it even better than you do. And we know this well by now, don't we? Hebrews chapter 4, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. He knows your weakness. He knows the hardships of motherhood. And he knows, like fewer and fewer in our day seem to realize, he knows that motherhood is some of the greatest, most miraculous work in all the world. He can see now 
what none of you can see just yet, and that's that the impact of these moments in the conference room, at the changing table, in the back of the sanctuary, at the kitchen table, beside the crib, over the mess, he knows the impact of these moments will last for centuries. It's gonna last forever. So husbands should stretch ourselves to sympathize, to live with our wives in an understanding way. Children should learn to sympathize in their own naive, adorable, often unhelpful ways. Friends should remember to sympathize and check in with one another. But young mom, one already sympathizes completely. And he doesn't just sympathize with your weaknesses. He also went to the cross and died for your failures as a mother too. Is there any better place to raise a family than in him? So my exhortation, mothers and everyone else, is this. Re-see this Sunday the beauty and everlasting glory of motherhood and bring all your weaknesses to Jesus. This reminds us of our need to confess our sins, so let me pray. Father, thank you for the ever-giving gift of mothers. Thank you that you bring children like us into the world through a mom and a dad so that we would see and experience these two massive, distinct dimensions of your love for us. Strengthen mothers who are tired and discouraged at the end of themselves this morning. I know they're here. Show them the eternal glory of this ministry and then lift and carry them by your grace today and tomorrow and then again the next day. Forgive us for ever taking our wives and moms for granted. Forgive us for failing to thank and honor and encourage them like we should. Jesus, forgive us for the times when we have not turned to you with our weaknesses. We stop now to confess these and any other sins to you. Father in heaven, we thank you for your great mercy to us in Jesus. We remember that mercy now. We remember the mercy that has been displayed for us on the cross when Jesus died for us in our place, where he bore our sin and shame and wrath, where he was crucified, dead, and buried, but then on the third day raised in power and victory. Thank you that by faith in him, We are united to him. When he died, we died. When he was raised, we were raised. And now we live in him, walking in his newness of life. We remember that mercy now, and we give you praise in his name. Amen. I want to invite you to stand now for the assurance of pardon. Church, uh, this morning you have confessed your sins, and so now I want to remind you the good news. The Word of God tells us that when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, this morning, to all who humbly seek the mercy of God, I say to you, in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven.